Hey y'all, let's take a look at this mysterious relationship of wonder between fractions and decimals. And the question is, what is the relationship between fractions and decimals? And the answer is surprisingly cordial. They get along pretty well because they're the same thing. I mean, a fraction can be a decimal and a decimal a fraction. So let's just say you have a fraction like um, two fifths, okay? Don't forget what this means. That, that's not some weird mystery. That means divide. That is two pizzas divided among five kids. All right, that's a division problem. Every fraction is a division problem. Don't forget that, okay? So to find a decimal, all you need to do is divide. You know how to divide numbers and get decimals. It's a piece of cake. So to get a fraction <coughs> into a decimal, you simply divide using the division sign in the middle of the numerator and denominator. But be careful, don't let yourself do this. That's not two divided by five, that's five divided by two. So what you wanna do is do this, so five into two. And of course, you'll have to put a little decimal there because it doesn't go, all right? So five into 20 is four and you can just stop right there. That's it, you can quit, okay? Because it works perfectly. They won't all be that easy, you might, you might have to do some more dividing, but you just simply divide, fraction to a, to a decimal, just a division problem, okay? Write each one of these, as a decimal number. <coughs> so let's do it. Let's just divide. Right, go ahead, pause this and divide. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and make sure you don't do it the other way. This is how you divide eight into three. You just throw some zeros there. So eight into 30 goes three times with six left over. I'll put the six here, like it's 60. Eight into 60 is seven. <coughs> Excuse me, 56 with four left over. 8 into 40 is exactly 5, and I'll stop right there. There you go. There's your fraction 3 eighths as a decimal, 375. 1 30th? Okay, well, we can do that. 1 divided by 30. And make sure it's that way, not the other way. Okay. So 30 into 10 goes none. Doesn't go at all. All right. And then there's 10 left over. We can put that right there and make it 30 into 100. There's 3. All right, three times, uh, three times 30 is 90. That means there's 10 left over. And <clears throat> there's a three again. And it keeps going over and over and over and over. You've probably seen this where they put a little line over the top of it, like, like that. And that indicates that that just keeps going forever and ever and ever. And that is one over 30 as a decimal. It just keeps repeating. In fact, that is true for uh, all numbers that are fractions. There's only two choices you will have with fractions. Either the decimal terminates like this, or it repeats, not necessarily that quickly. Sometimes you have eight or 10 or 50 digits before they repeat. We won't have to mess with those, don't worry. But either a fraction terminates like that, or it repeats the decimal. There's no other, no other third choice, okay? So go ahead. Pause it and do these three. Write these all as decimal numbers. Go ahead and pause it. All right, of course, if you did this, you would get 0.3. If you did this, we, we did it already. That's going to be 0.4. 3 over 20 would be 0.15. And there you go. All fractions are division problems. To get the decimal, do the division. That's all you got to do. Okay? Now, rounding repeating decimals. When you see that bar, again, that means that those digits repeat. So we're gonna round this to the nearest millionth. Remember all that stuff? Okay, so we can actually write this if you want a bunch of times. So since all three of those digits are, have, a, have a line over, you can go 617, 617, 617, you know, it just keeps going and going like that, okay? To, to the nearest millionth, let's round. So we don't forget, tenth, <clears throat> hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth, hundred thousandth, millionth. There it is, okay? But remember, let's look to the right. Is this five or greater? And the answer, of course, is yes. Since this is five or greater, this, this uh, rounds up not to seven, but to eight. So there we go. That is our rounding, okay? Write this as a fraction. This is an interesting one. This is like the opposite. We've just done fractions, write them as a decimal. We just did the division, right? Now, writing a decimal to a fraction, we flip this, okay? Now, by the way, if you will go to my website, homeschoolpartners.net slash math tips, that's on the website, one of the other math classes, you will find 
a 14-week program with worksheets and practice and all and instruction and all kinds of stuff that will help you do decimals to fractions very quickly like we're going to do today. There's a trick to it, which I'm going to show you here. Same kind of thing, but you can work, do multiplication, division, and all kinds of things you can find out and do in your head. So anyway, let's work on it here. Write this as a fraction. Well, we don't, we can write any number in the entire universe as a fraction, even though there's nothing under it, because we can always put what number, number under it? A one, right? So we, we can write it as a fraction, 0 0.041 over one. Now, again, what they probably want us to do is have a fraction with integers. That's what the usual standard is. So to make this an integer, we're going to have to move that decimal plate a place over three times. So one, two, three, that's going to give us a 41. Now remember the numerator denominator rule. We don't just go around doing something to the numerator and not doing it to the denominator. So if we move this over three times, the decimal of course is right here. If we move it over three times, what goes in these blanks here? Zeros, right? So this is it right here. One thousand, forty-one thousandths. And by the way, if you even if you had no idea, <clears throat> if somebody were to tell you, okay, hey, read off that. What is it? What's point zero four one? How do you read that? You would go, oh, okay, um, zero tenths, four hundredths, forty-one th tenths, hundredths, thousandths, forty-one thousandths. Well, look, it's the same thing. So, anyway, that's all you need to do. Make every decimal over a 1, then move the decimals over until you get integers left. Okay. So, for example, write this as a fraction. Well, it is a fraction already. 0.35 over 1. To clean up both of these and make them both integers, you need to move this over twice, which gives you 35. And if you move this over twice, that gives you 100. Now, you don't want to leave this because it's not reduced. So what goes in the 35 and 100? You should know your, your, like your terms of divisibility now, right? 5 goes into both of those. goes 7 times here, and 100 divided by 5 is the same thing as 10 divided by 5 with the 0. So 7 20th is your answer there. Okay. All right. Look on page 57. Do as many practice problems as you want to before you pause it and come back, but let's go ahead and do all of those. All right, well, let's look at A, round 4.613 to the nearest millionth. Good gravy. There's millionth. Okay, that means 613, 613, 613. You can do as many times as you want to the millionth. Okay, so we got tenth, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. Okay, that's what we're looking at. And then ten millionths. Okay, but we're looking here. We look over this is five or greater. So we're gonna go ahead and just move this, move it in there, call it a four. And everything else just goes away. So 4.613614, that's A. B, round to five decimal places. So 1.416, 416, and so on. All right, well, five decimal places means this many. So we can look right here. That's the one we wanna figure out. Well, if you look over, and again, that has a five or greater, so that, this one won't be a one, it'll be a two. So that goes away, and your answer is 1.41642. Okay. All right, C, write each fraction as a decimal number, one third. Well, you probably know this already, but let's just pretend you didn't. Don't forget, every fraction is a division problem, so divide, right? Or whatever, okay, three into 10 is three. What's left over? One, I'm gonna put the one there. Three into 10 is three. What's left over? One. You put that and then you can just keep going and going, whatever. What you can do is just write this as 0.3 with a little line over to say that the uh, three keeps repeating over and over, which it does. Okay. Let's try D, 1 12th. And again, don't forget, all fractions are division problems. So let's divide one by 12. We'll just do that, okay. So this does not go at all. Right? So we can put nothing there. Okay? So 0 times 12 is 0. So we've got a 10 there and then 100. 12 goes into 100 8 times. 12 times 8 is 96. What's left over? A 4 is left over. So we have 12 into 40 is 3. 3 times 12 is 36. 40 minus 36 is 4. 12 into 40 is 3. And then we, got, we keep going and yeah, like that. 
So you can write it like this if you want to. That is good enough because the three repeats over and over and over. Okay. All right, let's do E and F and we'll call it a day. So write each decimal with as a fraction reduced to lowest term. So 0 0.0031. Let's go ahead and put it over a 1. We're going to have to move this thing over four times, which gives us a 31. That's the integer we want. If we move that four times, we move this four times, which means we have four zeros. So 31 ten thousandths. And again, I want to point out, if you were to read this out like this, you would go zero tenths, zero hundredths, three thousandths. Oh, 31 ten thousandths. Well, that's exactly what you have right there, 31 ten thousandths. Okay, F, 0.6, piece of cake. 0.6 over 1. Move this over, that's a six. That over goes turns into a 10. You don't want to leave six tenths because it's not reduced. Each can be divided by two, that's three over five, and there we go, okay. All right, make sure you know that stuff. Make sure you keep on doing your notebook with the uh, number of a lesson in, in the top right and using your examples and taking notes so you can look back and check stuff if, you're need, if you have questions on these. So, all right, see you all next time. Have a great day.